God to impart nations. And now we want to talk a little bit about the counseling. Sasa tunataka tuongee kidogo kuhusu ushauri unaotolewa au anaita ushauri na saa kwa Kiswahili. Also as a, a, a big big um, uh, um, um, aspect if you want of the pastoral ministry. Lakini pia ni sehemu kubwa sana katika huduma ya kichungaji. Not every local church has the uh, privilege to have a counseling department. Where you have somebody hired to do counseling. Or a volunteer to organize and do the counseling. In most of the cases, probably over 90% of the cases, the pastor does that. So, um, not every pastor have a natural inclination, a natural um, uh, a draw towards counseling. For example, some of the pastors excel in the evangelism and they are good evangelists. That's our case in the, in the Romanian uh, church. We put in the pulpit good evangelists, people, men, or, uh, persons that know how to preach. Because we have a voting system and the church votes for who to be the pastor. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, and I don't know what the case will be in your situation, but I see this pattern where we travel in the world that the area where most pastors excel, it's preaching. I love to preach too. <laughs> I'm a but preaching is not the only responsibility of a pastor. We have to be equipped and ready to assist people through solid advice or counseling. I did my training uh, in, at the master's level in, uh, in uh, uh, marriage and family therapy. And I got the privilege to work with a lot of families uh, in a very, uh, at the most delicate time of their lives. And I realized how important is the word that a minister of the church would share with somebody in great need. I saw situations where the word that was shared from the pastor helped the relationship. But I also saw situations where the pastor, because he lacked knowledge on how to approach uh, uh, crisis instead of helping them he direct them in a wrong direction it's extremely important for a minister for a pastor to know to, uh, to uh, be knowledgeable in the area of counseling. In America, we have laws that regulates the process. And if we will have the, the uh, chance to, to spend more time uh, in the na, future on this topic, mbeleni, we can talk about this aspect in a broader way. Haya kwa upana zaidi. Today, I want to briefly share with you about something in the process of counseling because 
Leo nataka ni washirikishe kitu katika mchakato wa kutoa ushauri. What happens sometimes pastors run to psychology only to learn how to help people in crisis. Kinachotokea mara nyingine wachungaji huwakimbilia wana psychology ili kuwasaidia watu jinsi ya ku ili kuweza kuwasaidia watu. And we have very good psychotherapists. Na wako wana psychology wazuri sana that claim to be Christian but they do not use a Christian model of counseling. And while they are able to help some of the people, sometimes we in the church have to deal with much deeper issues that that couple deals with or that family, that person, individual deals with. In the process of counseling, one of the most powerful tools that God gave us is the Word of God. But together with the, with the word of God, he gave us another tool, but I don't want to call it a tool because it's a person. It's the Holy Spirit. And what we need to learn and to uh, uh, train ourselves to do is how to use the word of God under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm not going to go through all, uh, uh, this is part of my, my teaching. I teach counseling uh, uh, in some uh, universities. Hii ya mafundisho yangu. Nafundisha maswala haya ya ushauri wanasaa katika baadhi ya vio vikuu. I just want to emphasize on the importance of using the Word of God and the Holy Spirit in the process of counseling. And I will share a few examples about that. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit and uh, when we talk about the Word and the Holy Spirit in counseling, we see the Word of God as the um, standard that will become the values of an individual. What happens when somebody uh, goes through issues, regardless the, the problem? So it doesn't matter if it's addiction, if it's marital problem, if it's um, um, uh, uh, inability to coordinate life, uh, when you go through depression or uh, uh, exhaustion, it, it doesn't matter what area of need is. The, the common problem is that people depart from a, a value system, a system of values. Watu huwa wanaenda mbali na mfumo wa maadili. And what the counselor has to do is to bring that person back to that value system. And so they know what is good and what is wrong with them or the situation. So the word of God has to be accepted as the ultimate source of authority that directs somebody's life. So, in the counseling process, one of the first priorities of a counselor is to evaluate 
the attitude of the individual towards the word of God. What they know about the word of God. You will realize with no exception. That when there is a problem, that person departed from the word of God. The word of God is not there anymore in their life. And what you have to do is to bring light to that word of God. Because only the word of God can restore somebody's life. There is something uh, you know, you will see counselors out there trying to find a value system and uh, uh, what I see is a tendency to simplify things. And the counselor will say, okay, do this 10 things. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, up to 10. And if you follow this, you're fine. And there is no problem if the person is disciplined and they follow that, uh, that advice. The person can see some change. But the only true change comes when the person gets in touch with the word of life. And the word of God starts to govern over that person's life. Um, one day in, in my office uh, uh, came a man. I'm not going to give you details about, about it, of course, but I'm going to tell you to, to see how the devil tried to switch the word of God in, in, in uh, people's mind. He committed adultery. And uh, when we spoke about it, he started, he, he was trying to convince me that it was, that, it was not that bad. He went in three areas. First, he said, well, God knows that I'm a weak person. Then he said, my wife was not faithful either, so I'm justified to do what I do. And then he said, that David in the Bible did the same thing, so it's not that bad. Okay, when you see something like this, you realize that it's a huge problem in that person's mind. And his or her relationship with the Word of God. That value system is compromised. Because if you are weak, that doesn't justify your sin. You have to come to Christ and receive that strength so you can stand firm and do not fall into temptation. If somebody else commits adultery, that doesn't mean you are justified to commit it as well because your commitment to purity is not towards your wife, it's towards God. And what we find in the life of David, he was never approved by God. But he was punished by God. And sometimes it's hard for us to talk about punishment. And so, in this situation, what you have to do is to restore the word of God in that person's life so that person can be repositioned in relationship to the word of God. Another, another example. I was in Romania. And I was the only English-speaking counselor in our city. 
at that point. Na mimi nilikuwa ndio mshauri pekee anayezungumza Kiingereza katika huo mji wakati ule. And there was this American couple. Ukawa na huyu Marekani who was hired by a company and they were working in Romania. Ambaye alikuwa ameajiriwa na kampuni fulani anafanya kazi kule Romania. And um, somebody told them about me and they come to my office because they they had some marital issues. Kuna mtu mmoja alimwambia kuhusu mimi wakaja ofisi kwangu sababu alikuwa na changamoto zao za ndoa. And uh, in my initial assessment na katika tathmini yangu ya awali when when I gave them the intake form nilipowapa ile fomu ya kujaza ili kuweza kujua kinachoendelea kwao they had to answer some of the questions that I had for them so I get to know who I talk to. In that question, which is uh, 40 questions, uh, in, there are questions about their health, uh, their uh, 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 families. Kuna maswali kuhusu afya yao, familia zao. But there is also there are also questions about their their spiritual background. Sorry? The, there are questions about their spiritual background. Lakini pia kuna maswali kuhusiana na historia ya maisha yao ya kiroho. And one of the the question is Na moja ya maswali ilikuwa hili Would you be willing to accept prayer during counseling sessions? Je, utakubali kupokea maombi au kuombewa katika mchakato wa kipindi hiki cha ushauri? After they submitted the file, hapo, yale I was going through the questions, yale na majibu yake. and like, I learned that they were both from an uh, evangelical background. Na both of them were born in families, and they were uh, uh, Christian families, and they were baptized in water. And they confessed Christ as their Lord and Savior. But at the question if they if they are okay with me praying for them during the counseling process, both of them responded no. And I knew there is something there. When I approached them about that, they told me that they want to talk with a professional, not with a minister. And I, expl I, I explained them my credentials so they know we are professional. But I told them that without prayer we cannot do anything. And they both said, okay, we're fine. Because there was nobody else. Probably they will go to somebody else if there will be somebody else there. And for a few weeks, I, I talked with them. A lot of issues in that family. And I was not able to identify the, the real issue, the real problem. They were both highly educated people. And they knew very well to hide. And in one session, God told me to go with them in the session and just pray. When I told them that we have to kneel in my office and pray, both of them were shocked. And while we were praying in the office, the Holy Spirit revealed what the issue was. And through a word of prophecy, we received the issue. And I confronted with that issue, confronted both of them with that issue. And then it was, it was then when the when the real counseling started. When the real? The real counseling started. Because for, for a few weeks we were just talking. So in the counseling process we need the word of God. But we also need the Holy Spirit of God. Because we can be professional. 
and soon learn there are not two people similar and you need guidance from the Holy Spirit in the process to identify problems and to go to proper resolution or uh, solving of the issue. And that is only the Spirit of God who can direct us. So even though I'm not going through every slide of my presentation, I want to leave you with this. You cannot you cannot counsel somebody leaving the word of God out of the picture and leaving the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of God out of the picture. So, well, if God will allow in the future and we'll be able to Together in a more uh, 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 in, a, in a different form. I mean, as a class format. We'll be able to go through all these materials. And we can we can learn some some things together. For example, part of the the counseling training is how to identify the problem. The therapists out there will say diagnosis. Uh, but that diagnosis process is to identify what's going on with somebody's life. How to ask the proper questions, how to, to address issues. So you can identify the cause, the root of the problem and deal with that not only with the, with the effects of the problem. For example, when we have a lot of issues with uh, people watching pornography these days and they come to ministers and say, well, I fell into this sin. And we receive that confession and we pray over them. And for some, will help and they change. But in most cases, they go back to the same issue, to the problem of lust. And then we say, well, isn't God with me? Why this, people was, this person was not delivered? It is not just being delivered from that issue of lust only. You have to go through the root problem and experience deliverance there. And you can see change for long term. And that's the same issue with, with, uh, with other problems. So uh, in, the, in the training that we offer, we, we focus on how to identify those things. Because there is always um, a deeper root of the, of the problem. So what we see is only the effects. The and if you try to, to deal with the uh, uh, effects, not with the cause, you'll exhaust resources, you'll bring frustration, and you invite, you invite failure on the table. Uh, I spoke with someone about uh, his issue with, uh, with pornography. And we both found that he was connected with his relationship with his father. And he was surprised that I was not talking about pornography at all. I was focusing on that issue of the relationship with the father. And when that was resolved, 
He said something happened but I don't feel the need to watch this kind of junk. Because it was a much deeper root. People deal with self-esteem issues. The, the way they view themselves. And they, they don't know how to deal with that. They just feel, the, they just feel better.